All right. So what we're going to do after today is we're going to have a big review and then we'll, we'll take a test next week. So we're going to go over these Google Slides. There are two assignments for today. Now, neither one of them is that long. There's an assignment on periodic trends and then an isotopes report. And you can get them both done during in class today. And these are the last two, well, other than a review assignment, these are the last two assignments for the periodic table. So go back here to stream. All right. So periodic trends and atomic mass, these are the, the last two things we're gonna talk about related to the periodic table. And then we're gonna do some reviewing, okay? Where are the larger atoms? We, we, we've talked about atoms aren't all the same size, okay? So what, what are the trends? Where do we find the larger atoms on the periodic table? So as you move down each group, Here's all the representative elements. As you go down the periodic table within a group, the atoms are getting larger and larger. And the reason is you're getting more and more energy levels of electrons. And the more energy levels of electrons you get, the larger the atoms get, okay? So as you move down each group, the atoms get larger, larger, and larger, all right? As you move across from left to right, they're getting smaller, okay? Now, why is this? Because you've got the same number of energy levels, but the nucleus is getting bigger and bigger, and that bigger nucleus pulls them in tighter and tighter, okay? So as you go down the periodic table, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? The atoms are. As you go across the periodic table, left to right, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, all right? Now, reactivity is similar, but it's different for metals and nonmetals. Metals get more reactive as you go down. You're getting more and more reactive as you go down. Because it's easier and easier for them to lose electrons. Reactivity gets less and less as you go across. Because as you go across, it gets harder for them to lose electrons. All right, now non-metals, although they're, okay, this stair-step line, separates the metals and the non-metals. It's metals over here, non-metals over there. Non-metals are the opposite. Now notice there aren't very many non-metals. They get more reactive as you go up and less reactive as you go the opposite way as the metals, all right? And I'm not gonna ask you very much about the non-metal reactivity. Because one, there aren't very many nonmetals. The main thing I'm going to want you to know about nonmetals, remember what we talked about a few days ago, they're key for life. And we're going to emphasize that when we go over our review. The, the nonmetals are very key for life. So the main one we're going to focus on is that trend for atomic size. As you go down the periodic table, atoms are getting bigger. As you go across the periodic table, they're getting smaller, all right? Now, noble gases are considered non-reactive. Only a few of them make compounds at all and only under extreme conditions, not under any type of conditions that you and I would survive in, okay? 
not under any type of conditions you and I would survive in. Okay, we need to do, now we're gonna move on to our other last topic. Like I said, we're, we're finishing up the periodic table today. Remember the parts of an atom, protons, they're in the nucleus, they have a positive charge. Neutrons are in the nucleus, they have no charge. Remember the neutrons get between those positive charges of the protons, so the, the nucleus doesn't fly apart. And then the electrons surround the nucleus, what's called an electron cloud, and they have a negative charge. Electrons are the same thing as electricity. It's the same thing, okay? So here's our protons with a positive charge. Green is the neutrons with no charge. And surrounding them is the electrons in what's called an electron cloud. Now, again, this is review, but it never hurts to go over things more than once. The atomic number is the number of protons. The mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. Mass number is protons plus the neutrons. But here's the thing. When you look on the, the periodic table, they give you an atomic mass. They don't give you the mass number, they give you the atomic mass. Okay, here's the element name. Here's the symbol. The atomic number is always on there. That's the number of protons. But they don't give you the mass number. They give you the average atomic mass. All right. This atomic mass is an average, okay? It's the average of all the isotopes. And we're gonna watch a little video on this, which explains this very well. In this video, I'm going to go over atomic number, atomic mass, and mass number. So I'm gonna go over the definitions of all three of these guys, where you're gonna typically see them in your chemistry class, and then just some general facts you wanna know about them. So let's start with atomic number. This is the most simple of the three. And so the definition of atomic number is just the number of protons in that atom. So that's the end. If you know how many protons you have in an atom, you know the atomic number. If you know the atomic number, you know how many protons are in that atom. And so another important thing about this is that every single atom of an element has the same number of protons. So let's take our example, carbon. Every atom of carbon has six protons. That's the atomic number of carbon. And so there is absolutely no such thing as a carbon atom anywhere in the universe with five or seven protons. If it has that, it's not a carbon. But if you have six protons, 100%, you okay? you're a carbon. All right, and so the places you're gonna see atomic number, the big one is on the periodic table. And so your atomic number is how the periodic table is organized. If you look at it, you can see that going left to right, it increases in number. And that is the atomic number or the number of protons. And so if you ever look at a periodic table square and you see this integer number, your whole number, that is talking about the atomic number. That's how many protons that element has. And so another way you'll see atomic number is in this way that we can draw individual atoms where you have the atomic symbol, that's the C, and then you have these two numbers stacked on top of each other. And your bottom one, this is also your atomic number. And so these two places are the most common places where you're gonna see atomic number. All right, so now moving along right now to mass number, the definition of mass number is it's just the number of protons and neutrons added together in that one atom. So not just protons like atomic number, but now we're talking about both the protons and the neutrons. And so some facts about this, different atoms of the same element can have different numbers of neutrons. So let's go over where we can find these first. So first of all, Mass number is not on the periodic table. That's an important fact. No periodic table anywhere is going to show you the mass number. We'll get into why for in a second. And so the places you're gonna see mass number are gonna be in other problems and ways that your teacher is gonna show you. And so first of all, one of the ways you're gonna see it is back to this middle drawing. 
that top number, the one above the atomic number, this is the mass number. So anytime you see your atomic symbol and the two stacked numbers, the top one is always the mass number. And the other way you're going to typically see mass number is when you have your element name completely written out. This is a dash. It's not a negative sign. And then you're going to see this number right here. This is also your mass number. So 13 here and 12 here. These are your mass numbers. All right, so now let's talk a little bit more about mass number. So this is saying it's the general mass of an atom. And so if you're sitting there thinking, well, how could be the mass of an atom? Because I know that our atoms have protons and neutrons and electrons. Well, the answer is that the electrons are so small compared to the neutrons and protons that they just aren't added in the weight. We just say, okay, they're going to be so small, we don't really care. So a good comparison is that if you think of animals, a proton and neutron is like an elephant, an electron is like a chihuahua. So if you have a zoo and the zoo is just a bunch of elephants and chihuahuas and someone says, we need to add up the entire mass of your zoo. Uh, you aren't going to care about measuring the chihuahuas. Who cares? They're so small. All we care about really is just measuring all the elephants and giving them on the scale, and then we're going to know the full mass. So that's what mass number is. Another important part about mass number is that different atoms of the same element can have different numbers of neutrons. So as we see here, we have something that says carbon 13, and we also have something that says carbon 12. Now these are two different atoms of carbon, which means they both are gonna have six protons because every atom of carbon always has six protons because that's the atomic number, that's the definition, but they don't have to have the same number of neutrons, which means that the mass number doesn't have to be the same. So one carbon can have six protons and it has seven neutrons, and then another carbon can have six protons and six neutrons. And just a general note, don't focus too hard on, well, why would one atom of carbon have seven neutrons? Why would another have six? It doesn't really matter so much for you. Just know that in general, it's usually similar numbers. It has to do with when the atom was formed. And so what happened when there was a star exploding or some super intense reaction that created this atom? It doesn't have to do with anything you're really going to be responsible for figuring out problems with. So just kind of accept that you know how many protons each atom is going to have, and then you're going to be told or you can figure out how many neutrons that atom will have, but you don't have to know why it has that specific number. All right, so now with those two things, let's go ahead and go over atomic mass. So the definition of atomic mass is that it's the average mass of all the different isotopes for that element. And so let's define isotopes, and that is what we see down here with carbon. So when we have carbon-13 and we have carbon-12, these are two different isotopes, which means they have the same number of protons, they're both carbons, but they have different number of neutrons. And so when we take the average of all of them, then that's how we get to atomic mass. And so an important thing with atomic mass is that each isotope can have any percent as long as they all add up to 100%. So in the real world, carbon-13 is only about 1% of the carbons that exist in the universe, whereas carbon-12 is about 99% of the carbons that exist in the universe. So if you had a random carbon, this odds would be pretty good that it was a carbon-12. It's about 99% of carbons. And so what happens is we take an average of all of those isotopes, and then depending on what percent each isotope has, we average it in the correct way, and then we get to our atomic mass. And we see our atomic mass on the periodic table at the very bottom usually, so right here. In this case for carbon, it's 12.011. This is our atomic mass. And so it's usually a scraggly number because it's usually this average of all these different isotopes. And so I think that it can be hard at first to tell the difference between atomic mass and mass number. So here's something that I personally find useful. Let's look at a random family. You can pretend it's your family. And so let's say this family has five people in it. So think of how tall each individual person is as the mass number. So let's just say this person right here is six feet tall. 
And so we can see that in that family, there are some people that are taller than that person and some people that are shorter. And so the mass number, that's kind of like how tall one person is. And then the atomic mass, that would be the average of the entire family. So let's just say that the entire family is a little bit less than six feet tall. Maybe the average is five feet, 10 inches. So in this example, the average height would be the atomic mass. And so we really want to think about mass number. That's really one thing. Mass number, that's only ever talking about one atom. And that's why it's never on the periodic table, because the periodic table is trying to tell you about all the atoms that exist in the universe. And that's why atomic mass, atomic mass is, you should think about it as it's never one thing. Atomic mass is this huge average of all the different atoms in the universe. And we've come up with this one scraggly number so we have a charger that, that can loan will to be the perfect average of all of them. And so just keep that in your head. Mass number, that's one thing. That's one atom. We have to be told it. Atomic mass, that's all the atoms in the universe. That's their average. And that's going to be on a periodic table. All right. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And as always, happy studying. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Please feel free to subscribe, click around, and watch my other tutorials. And as always, happy studying. While it's charging, you move over here. Like, sit here. Okay, helping someone out there. All right. So go back to our assignment. I'm gonna kind of go over again this some is of the Bob. Bob had an and went to the hospital Take that where back. He was told to wait and fill out paperwork. So he waited and filled out paperwork. Sometimes that thing doesn't stop. All right. So I'm gonna kind of explain what they went over in the video again. Although the video is good, it never hurts to hear things twice. Here's the isotopes of carbon. Carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. Carbon-12, almost all of them, 99%, are carbon-12. So we know our average mass, our atomic mass, is going to be close to carbon-12 because that's the vast majority of the atoms. All right? And sure enough, Carbon has an atomic mass of 12.011. Why? Almost all carbons are carbon-12. Very few have seven or eight neutrons. Almost all carbons have six neutrons. A very few have seven and a, even less have eight. Okay? So because carbon-12 is the most common, our average, our atomic mass is 12.011. Atomic mass is an average of all of these. Now, to let you know how this works, we're going to look at copper. Copper has an atomic number of 29, which means it has 29 protons. The element symbol is Cu, the name is copper. Now notice their atomic mass, it's 63.55. It falls right in between 63 and 64. What that tells us is there's more than one type of copper isotope that is common, okay? And sure enough, Although a big chunk of carb of coppers are copper 63, a little, a little more than 30% are copper 65. That's why the atomic mass of carp, copper isn't close to one number. So copper 63 has 29 protons and 34 neutrons 70% of coppers are copper 63, okay? But 
another 30% of coppers is copper 65, which has 29 protons and 36 neutrons. 34 neutrons for copper 63, 36 neutrons for copper 65. Okay. Copper 65 is heavier. It's going to pull that average up. It's going to pull the atomic mass up. Even though it's only 30% of them, because it's heavier, it's going to have a pretty big impact on that average. All right. So in copper, no single isotope is overwhelmingly abundant. All right. That should say isotope, not element. I'll change that here in a minute. Oh, what, one second. So we'll look again for oxygen. Yeah. Try going to the Zoom meeting first if you can. Uh, or go to my class. Yeah. IPC. Yeah, try to get to my class if you can. Because this is only showing you the assignments. Because then you can log into the Zoom. Okay, oxygen has eight protons, chemical symbols O, the name is oxygen. Notice that the atomic mass is very, very close to 16. Almost all oxygen atoms are oxygen 16 with eight protons and eight neutrons. So when you have an atomic an atomic mass that's very close to one number, it means it has one isotope that's dominant. All right? Does everyone follow that? Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at our assignments real quick, since we have two today. The periodic trends is just questions about those trends on atomic size and atomic reactivity. You can refer back to the, to the Google Slides to help you. And I embedded a couple of periodic tables in there that you can look at. I always put the name and the symbol in each question to help you find the elements. Okay, and then our other assignment for today Okay, go online here. This is kind of like what we did last week. Put your name in there. Define what an isotope is. Then, of course, I don't expect you to already know this. So what are the isotopes of uranium? Google it. You know, what's the abundance of each one? And then write that information in here. OK, and that's your two assignments uh, for today. All right, so I'll keep the Zoom meeting going in case anyone has any questions. Or you can, you can chat them to me, or you can unmute yourself. I've got my speaker on. All right, and I'll help some kids here in the class who, who need, some, uh, need some guidance. <laughs>